Hi, I'd like to give you a video here on hand gouging bassoon cane. A few years ago I got quite disgusted with the price of gouge cane and so decided to, since I live in San Diego where cane grows wild, that I would start harvesting my own cane and gouging it. Uh, I also decided that the price of a gouging machine was way beyond my means and so I would try hand gouging. Uh, here are the tools that I need. I need a bed in, in which I can do the gouging. Uh, this is uh, made out of a piece of 1x3 hardwood. Uh, a channel was cut where I can lay the cane in uh, using a router. Uh, it's important that the stop that I put on here uh, where the chisels will meet it uh, meet into the end grain. And so anyway, this is just made and there's, there's a hook on the end so that I can put it over the edge of my, in this case, kitchen countertop and work with that. I have a radius gauge that I made by taking a piece of plywood and cutting some holes in it and then splitting it. Uh, this uh, gauge goes from 7 eighths of an inch in diameter to 1 and an eighth inch in diameter. For bassoon, I use a cane that's about an inch to an inch and an eighth in diameter. For contra, I may go up to a, an inch and a sixteenth. For contra, I may go up to an uh, inch and an eighth in diameter. I have some cane, a tube cane that I've been soaking for a while. I have some chisels. These are used chisels. I bought them out of swap meet at my local woodworking store. They have them twice a year, swap meets, and I've been looking there. These are in cannel gouges, which means that the bevel side of the gouge is on the inside of, of them. Most gouges that you'll uh, buy have it on the outside, but you need it on the inside. Uh, this one has a crooked handle, and this one is a straight handle. I prefer the crooked handle, but oh well. Um, these are a little bit large in diameter. This one is about an inch and a sixteenth. This one is a little larger. I'm looking for one that about an inch in diameter, but have not found one yet. Um, I need something to split the cane. This happens to just be uh, a, a plain iron for a, a woodworking plane. I use that. I use a hammer in order to pound it down. I have something to measure the thickness of what I'm doing with. This is a dial indicator or a dial caliper. Um, hmm, these are very cheap. I bought this at uh, Harbor Depot, uh, Harbor, Harbor Freight. Uh, under $20. The chisels were each under $15. Uh, when I want to shorten things, I use a, a garden, garden shears. Uh, again, under $15. So I've got, you know, like maybe $50, $60 worth of stuff here uh, that, I've, that I've put together uh, in order to do this. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to start and I take my, my tube cane and I look at its diameter. This is nicely an inch. And fairly round but not perfect. Okay, so what I want to do on the roundness is I try to find a place where it's uh, fairly continue uh, where the radius stays the same. If you can see over here it's uh, well it, it, you can get lopsided anyway. I try to pick a place where it's fairly symmetric and I mark one of my marks on here. This just helps me do it so that I know what I'm doing. I have a piece of plywood there so in case the plane goes too far, it does not damage my countertop. <coughs> Excuse me. And I split this in half as best I can. using the side of the hammer so I don't damage the hammer. Okay, so I've split that and then I split each one of these in half as well. These turn out to be, as long as you've got something that's about an inch in diameter, you can get four, four bassoon uh, things out of it. If you're working with contra bassoon you, and you want to get four out of it, you need a larger diameter cane. Uh, sometimes what I do is, is I'll cut two Contras and, and two bassoons out, out of one piece. Okay, so I've, I've uh, split the cane. I get rid of my protective plywood. I take my 
bed and I hook it over the edge of my countertop so that everything's nice and smooth. It isn't going to slip. I take a piece of cane and I set it in the bed. Okay, so what do I need to do? I start with my large diameter gouge and I just start, start working it down. I work from the middle out to the ends, and I just try to get a few, a good few, a good couple of hacks at it with my large, with my large diameter gouge. Okay, let's see where we're at. I'm shooting for between 50 and 60 thousandths. Okay, and I'm between 80 and 100 thousandths of an inch. I go with my smaller gouge, radius gouge, and I start working on that. Notice it takes more out of the center because it's a smaller radius. minutes a nicely nicely gouged piece of cane. Okay, I always finish this by sanding them on a piece of doll with sandpaper on it. And that removes the roughness that I might have gotten, any 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 uneven spots. And again, like I said, when we put when we cut this to length, these garden shears work wonderfully. Uh, Again, very, very inexpensive as opposed to a guillotine. And there you have it. I have a bunch of uh, loose stuff. Again, cane grows wild in San Diego uh, along the riverbeds. The city considers it an invasive weed, and so they keep on trying to eradicate it. Uh, but you can find some really nice stuff uh, about, as, as I said before, I think, that about half of my bassoon performance reeds are locally grown, locally grown, hand gouged uh, San Diego cane, and all of my contrabassoon reeds, uh, concert reeds, are San Diego cane, hand gouged. Hope you found this informative. Um, I'll have some videos on cutting and 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 uh, aging cane in a bit, uh, but this is a good start. Thanks. Bye.